What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about how Canadian culture is different to American culture. And this video here that I'm gonna watch actually seems particularly directed at individuals outside of Canada, outside of America, looking in, who might say, well, how are Canada and America actually different? Aren't they very similar? What are, what are the cultural differences? Are there any? It's those kinds of people. And honestly, a lot of Americans could really benefit from watching something like this as well, because Americans know a little bit about the differences between things, how things are in Canada and America, but they have no clue how large the cultural differences actually are. I can say that, for sure. As an American who's learned a bit about Canada at this point, I can say that. And I can imagine, I know for Canadians it's, it's frustrating at times when people internationally look at North America and are like, oh, Canada, America, yeah, okay, uh, kind of the same thing, right? No, not at all. So this video is kind of going to elaborate on some of those differences culturally. And there's a lot, so I'm actually quite fascinated and interested to learn even more about this. So I think this will be quite good. So interesting stuff. Let's take a look. Hello, everybody. My name is JJ. So when it comes to Canada, one of the questions that most people are interested in is whether this country is any different from the United States. People yeah. seem to want to know about cultural differences in particular. So let's talk about that. Is Canadian culture any different from American culture? <laughs> yes. So to begin, we obviously have to ask, what is culture? In my experience, a lot of people tend to use a definition of culture that is way too highbrow, like this. Okay. I mean, it is kind of a funny question, right? What is culture? It can be so many things, like the language you speak, kind of what he's saying, like a lot of people like, there's a lot of things just, like, looking at buildings and stuff in history. But also, it can be, like, the food you eat or little phrases that you use or how you pronounce certain words make a huge cultural difference. It's, it can be as, like, macro and large scale as you want or as specific. Cultural, culture and cultural differences are actually, like, very fascinating in that way, right? And then on the other extreme, you have people that use a definition of culture that is way too narrow and specific. Canadians tend to do this a lot. In Canada, we have this thing called a loony. In Canada, we spell it C-O-L-O-U-R. We have Tim Hortons. <laughs> but I prefer this- Tim Hortons. I think- I think Tim Cor I think Tim Hortons counts. I'm sorry. Actually, honestly, I think all these examples count. I think culture- that's the cool thing about culture. It can, like- be you can count the tiniest little most mundane silly things you want or like the most important deep like utmost respectful things that you want so that's actually one of the cool things about it this definition of culture from merriam webster the characteristic features of everyday existence shared mm. by a people in a place or time and i okay. found a cool little graphic the other day that expands on this definition by sorting these characteristics of daily life into 11 categories language jokes wait 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 jokes one of the i love that. <laughs> i love that one of the one of the pillars of culture uh, food is in there. Manners. Jokes. I like that. Language. Medical cures. Religion. Okay. Child rearing. Food. Folk art. Celebrations. Jokes. Manners. Clothes. And working schedules. Yeah. Now, this obviously isn't a perfect summary of everything that goes into making a culture, but it is a good start. So, you know, yeah, it's hard to like quantize stuff like this, but I think. Those categories are actually pretty good. Let us go through these 11 categories together and see just how different Canadian culture is from American culture or not. Okay. Number one, language. In both Canada and the United States, most people speak English as their first and only language. In the majority yeah. of cases- Yeah, this is probably one of the reasons so many places, maybe a lot of people uh, are under the impression that America and Canada are really, 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 really similar. 
uh, is probably because we both speak English and our accents are very similar for the most part, honestly. Although then, then that, that being said, you get into these like specific regions of Canada, these specific regions in America, and the accents are all over the place. They can be anything. Like it's, I don't know, it's fantastic. It's, it's fascinating. Cases in both Canada and America, English is the language of work, school, shopping, entertainment, journalism, and the internet. That yeah. said, in both Canada and America, there is a sizable minority of people who do not speak English. In the US, the majority of these people are immigrants, particularly America's large population of immigrants from Latin American countries. Most yeah. non-English speaking Americans thus speak Spanish. And yeah. in large parts of the United States, there is a culture of Spanish-English bilingualism, in which signs and stores and services are offered in both Spanish and English in order to accommodate the large Spanish-speaking community in Canada. Yeah, um, true, but I have never personally lived in any region that was, like, bilingual. I don't think there is a lot of attention towards that in America. I'm sure it exists, but nowhere even remotely close to French and English in Canada and that relationship and that kind of, like, attention towards the bilingualism that is not canada is on a different level entirely you might as well say it doesn't even exist in america compared to canada the bilingualism um the french and english in canada is uh definitely unique it makes canada very unique However, the non-English speaking minority is divided almost equally between immigrants and French Canadians. And French Canadians are not as evenly distributed across Canada as Spanish speaking immigrants are in the US. French right. Canadians mostly just live concentrated in Quebec. So right. as a result, French English bilingualism is not as much a fact of life as Spanish English bilingualism is in the US. Though, uh, okay, I see what he's saying about the French Canadians being concentra concentrated around Quebec and how that actually takes away from like the bilingualism overall spread around Canada. But in America, I think he's kind of overstating how prevalent the Spanish English is. Like I've lived in several different states in America and Nowhere I've ever lived has there ever even been an inkling or hint of Spanish text being on stuff or catering towards Spanish speakers. Although, as the years have gone on, I have noticed with uh, commercials on TV and the internet and advertisements um, and streaming, there has in that way been more of a attention given to Spanish speakers in America. So... Yeah, I don't know. I'm also not one of those Spanish speakers in America. So that's, I'm not influenced by it or paying a ton of attention to it. So I guess I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just not noticing things, but I don't know. I don't know exactly what to think about this. It's interesting. So for complicated political reasons, the Canadian federal government also provides a lot of services across Canada in French at a rate much mm. higher than the actual numbers of French speakers would justify. Different oh, immigrant okay. heavy parts of Canada and America may have a prominent role for other languages too. For example, an area with a lot of Chinese immigrants might have a lot of Chinese language stores okay. and signs. So is there a significant cultural difference when it comes to language between Canada and America? Yes, but it is relatively minor. Number two, okay. medical. Cures. Okay, I, I would have said that it was significant. Um, he's saying it's minor. Now I just don't know what to think. <laughs> okay, <laughs> medical cures. That's a pillar of culture? That's a category of culture, huh? Medical cures? Is this like, what is this saying? Like uh, a culture's access to medicine? Or I'm not exactly sure. Or their viewpoints on medicine? I don't know. Canada and the United States both use high-tech chemical medicines that are the product of vigorous laboratory research and extensive yeah. bureaucratic verification. Weak medicines can be purchased in stores. More intense medicines have to be prescribed by doctors or surgeons or hospitals. Yeah. Doctors and surgeons and medical researchers in turn have to undergo a lot of education and certification and training before they can practice. Now in both countries, of course, you do have a fringe of people who partake in so-called alternative medicines. The answer right. lies in essential oils. But I would... Uh, 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 
chiropract, chiropract, <laughs> chiropracty, chiropractors are like semi popular in America. Going in, getting them to like crack your back and like crack the bones in your neck and stuff, as opposed to like getting an operation. That's the most common form of alternative medicine that I think is even somewhat mainstream in America is chiropractors. I would say the majority of people regard this kind of stuff quite skeptically. So is there a significant cultural difference between Canada and the United States when it comes to medicine? No. no. Number three, religion. In both Canada and the United States- Okay, religion. This is interesting. For one thing, I don't exactly know how Canadians view America <laughs> in terms of religion. And that has changed drastically over the last 30, 40 years in America, to be truthful. And I have zero idea about religion in Canada. So this is actually very interesting to me. It states the majority of people are either practicing Christians or grew up in Christian homes. The dominant flavors of Christianity are Catholicism and a vast array of different Protestant denominations. How mm -hmm. seriously Canadians or Americans take Christianity depends a lot on where in the country they live. Rural yeah. areas are generally more Christian than urban ones. The American South is very Christian, while Quebec is very not. Canada and the United States okay. also have two of the largest Jewish populations on Earth. There okay. are small but significant populations of Muslims. Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, and Buddhists as well, most of whom are immigrants. These days, however, a lot of people in both countries are a mostly secular people who do not take religion very seriously one way or another. So right. is there a significant cultural difference between Canada and the US on religion? Now, a lot of Canadians would say, yes, there is a huge cultural difference, but I- Really? I mean, from what he's describing to me as the demographics kind of lay out, is that it's very, very, very similar, actually. Uh, which I didn't know. I think this is a good example of a place where a lot of people can sort of miss the bigger cultural picture. A lot of Canadians who would say there is a big cultural difference between the two countries on religion would focus entirely on the role that evangelical Christianity plays in American politics. But yeah. that is ultimately a political difference, not a cultural one. A I was gonna say that, I, I almost thought that's exactly what he was gonna say, is I don't know if Canada has anything quite equivalent to what people kind of view the evangelical Christianity South in America, that kind of thing. Um, I, I doubt that kind of thing exists in Canada in any form. It's, it's very unique and I feel like very well known in America. A cultural assessment of religion would ask questions like A, what is the dominant religious tradition and heritage of this place? And B, what is the general role of religion in daily life? And on these questions, Canadians and Americans have way more similarities than differences. Okay, okay number four, child rearing. In Chi child rearing. Child rearing. That must be the technical way to say it. This is, oh gosh, this is uh, how America and Canada view that how you should raise children, basically? Is that what it is? In both Canada and the US, the dominant social expectation is that children will be born to a married couple. It is of course getting much more common for children to be born to unmarried parents or mm. a single mother, but this is still the exception to the norm. In both Canada and the US, I would say there is also a societal bias that treats the mother as the more ideal caregiver. This is reflected- Okay, this is more about how, uh, how our different cultures view well, yeah, how you should raise your child, but uh, he's specifically talking about like the circumstances and parenting and who the parents should even be. Um, I actually am really curious how many single parents are in America. Um, amount of single mothers in America. Um, statistics. Oh, can I get a percentage? Um, Ooh. Four out of ten children were born to un unmarried mothers. That's kind of that's something he was talking about about like the societal expectation of being married and having children. In America, four out of ten children are to unmarried couples. Um, how many single mothers? Oh, I just want a percent, honestly. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Maybe this. Number of children living with a single parent, um, 15,000 mother only, 13,400 father only, 
Well, this is over the past 50 years, and it's been pretty steady. Okay, good enough for me. Reflected in the fact that women tend to get primary custody of children when there is a divorce. Either way, in both countries, children are raised by their biological parents. Because it is so common for parents to work full-time jobs, a lot of very young children also spend a considerable amount of time in daycare. And by yes. the time they are four or five years old, they are usually spending the majority of their days in school. Kids usually live with their parents until mm -hmm. they're in their 20s. In both countries, children are raised to be- That has been changing, by the way. In America, it really was a, a, a thing of like, okay, when you turn 18, you are technically an adult in America, which means you're not living with your parents anymore or, you're, or it's embarrassing or something. I think that's really changed over the last 10 years even. 20-year-olds, um, people deep into their 20s, like perfectly normal to be living with their parents. It did not used to be that way in America. Be confident and independent. And as they get older and older, they tend to have a more and more egalitarian relationship with their parents. So is there a significant cultural difference between Canada and America when it comes to child rearing? I would say no. You're not going to see any books in American stores called like, The Canadian Guide to Raising Kids. Number five. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Um, I think I'm going to end this here. This video actually goes on for quite a bit. We're only halfway through at this point, honestly. And this is fascinating. I don't want to like rush this video or anything. I want to take my time thinking about all these things. So I actually think I'm going to pause it here and continue with uh, the differences between Canadian and American culture in part two, which will be the video right after this video. So if you've enjoyed this video so far, feel free to come back for part two. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment with your thoughts. And if you are uh, enjoyed this kind of content, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, things about Canada I've never learned before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.